Have you seen the latest headline? Scientists warn that melatonin could be silently, secretly harming your heart? Seriously? This week, every news outlet from the Fox News to the Independent ran a story claiming that melatonin, your sweet little melatonin gummy, your little tablet, your fraction of a tablet, yes, the melatonin, that the same natural hormone that your own brain makes, is your own hormone that helps you sleep, might cause you to have heart failure. I mean, that's if you ask me. But anyway, here's the thing. This so-called study isn't even peer-reviewed. It wasn't published. It doesn't actually show what they claim it does. So today, let's dissect what's really going on. Who funded this? Why the data doesn't really add up? And what do the real human studies, the peer-reviewed human studies, the real clinical trials show about the use of melatonin and heart health? And the evidence may just point in a different direction than this bollocks study. So this story came from a conference abstract. So some conference having to do with the American Heart Association in 2025 presented a paper. Whoever wrote this paper at this conference, um, who supported you? What, what are you all, all, all about? Because researchers who wrote this study looked at health records, patient records. At least 130,000 adults who had insomnia were, were reviewed and half had a note in their file saying they had taken melatonin for at least a year. And the result, the melatonin group had a 90% higher relative risk of heart failure, 4.6% versus 2.7%. But here's a catch, and it's a big one. This isn't or wasn't a controlled trial. It's an association study. They didn't measure the dose, the form, the adherence, or even whether people actually took melatonin in the US and whether, as you know, in the US, melatonin is sold over the counter. This means that most users wouldn't even show up in the medical records in the first place. So the so-called non-users probably included the biggest melatonin consumers of them all. So let's talk about the confounding evidence and the data behind this epidemiology. People who have chronic insomnia or have psychiatric conditions or have sleep apnea all have reasons to take melatonin. And they already, without the melatonin, have a higher cardiovascular risk. So if you just compare melatonin recorded versus no melatonin recorded, you're really comparing sicker insomniacs with healthier insomniacs. Even the lead author, admitted this can't prove cause and effect. So why did you publish the bloody study? So what we have here is a correlation with zero mechanistic plausibility and plenty of confounding evidence. This is what academia does and the mainstream media do or mainstream medical media to get you all riled up. And we're pointing it out because I don't want our clients, our patients to get overly concerned or worried. And, uh, and you know, when I looked into this, I thought they do the same thing with uh, certain types of testosterone studies. I've seen it published. And sometimes I want to just sit down in the room with the people that publish this and just try to pick their brain, and understand what were they thinking. But I think we kind of know, you know, they're just trying to move their career forward and any noise, any news or noise is good, good news. This is what journalists do. That's their job. That's how they function. So this is just completely of a study. And we've seen this before, uh, like I said, with, with testosterone treatment, they try to do the same exact thing. So what's the real evidence showing? If you look on PubMed and you won't even find this conference paper on PubMed, but if you look at PubMed, there's a load of really good data, well-researched clinical data that shows some very positive contributions of melatonin and your health and your mitochondria and many, many other factors that has to do with anti-aging and does not link it at all with heart failure or damage to the heart. So let's look at a couple of trials. Let's start, we can start with the MEHR trial. It was a double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized trial, 85 patients, not a massive amount, but a decent amount, who had heart failure already and a reduced ejection fraction. That means the heart doesn't pump as efficiently as it should. So these weren't healthy volunteers at all. And these individual patients were already on their full standard treatment. Plus one group took 10 milligrams of melatonin nightly for 24 weeks and the other took a placebo. And here's what happened. So when you have heart failure, they look at a measure called NT-proBNP. And this, this particular biomarker is really the gold standard to show how stressed out your heart is. And so when it's really, really high, that shows that you would definitely more, or very highly likely be in some, some sort of heart failure. And then in the study though, this particular biomarker dropped after being given melatonin by 100 
111 points. Quality of life scores had also improved. And there's a, a, a classification called the New York Heart Association uh, class that shows a measure of symptom severity that a patient would have depending on the level of heart failure. That level had dropped dramatically with a 12-fold higher chance of moving to a better category, a less heart failure type category than the placebo, the group that had no melatonin. And there were no serious side effects in the study either. So that's a published, peer-reviewed, and available for anyone to read on PubMed rather than this conference abstract that you can't even find and a few journalists got a hold of it and wrote an article about it and, and, and scared everyone. And that's not the only study. There's another 2012 study uh, that showed just three mill milligrams of melatonin per week improved ejection fraction and heart failure symptoms compared to placebo. There's another 2025 study, a systematic review, put together 71 studies and concluded that melatonin shows antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory benefits, particularly for sleep and neurodegeneration with safety confirmed even in long-term trials. On top of that, meta-analyses show melatonin can slightly lower nighttime blood pressure. It's a good thing for heart health and improve endothelial function. So does the mechanism make sense? What's going on here? Mechanistically, melatonin's benefits make perfect sense. Why would improve health not cause heart failure? It's a mitochondrial antioxidant that reduces free radical damage in cardiac cells. It helps modulate the sympathetic and parasympathetic and renin angiotensin systems, the same systems that heart failure drugs target. And it can even protect against catecholamine toxicity and help improve mitochondrial energy efficiency. So if anything, melatonin looks to be protective, not harmful. And remember, the body always makes it itself and supplementing it at night, especially in older adults who we don't produce as much melatonin as when we were younger. So the question that I've asked myself, I even thought, oh, when I first read the study, should I back off on my melatonin? Should I keep taking it? Should you be treated with it? It's not ideal to rely on any supplement to help you sleep. I mean, I had tried out glycine to help me sleep. You create some sort of psychological dependence on it. As far as melatonin goes, I've personally used melatonin and I've also not used melatonin to sleep. In fact, I've noticed sometimes if I have a really busy day and I sit on the sofa with news or something on Netflix before bed, I, I might drop off my fall for sleep and I hadn't taken the melatonin. So probably don't need melatonin. People shouldn't feel guilty for using this. Now in the EU, and in the UK, bizarrely, it's so restrictive and you need a prescription for melatonin, which to me is, is absurd. So perhaps the people behind the study were looking at the EU and the UK, even though it's the American Heart Association, and trying to vindicate the politicians who are enacting such a stupid legislation by limiting melatonin um, in such a controlled way. But who knows? I don't mean to get down, go down the path of conspiracy. But in general, if you're using melatonin, it's probably better to use it strategically, you know, use it to help reset your body clock after you've traveled through different time zones if you're jet lagged to reset your circadian rhythm if you've been out partying too late and you need to get it back on track and maybe for the occasional insomnia and then try to work on those things that cause your insomnia in the first place so if you're using it nightly maybe it's smart i mean i know brian johnson has claimed that he uses around 0.3 milligrams so a, a low dose of less than 0.3 milligrams up to three milligrams might be a reasonable amount depending on on the formulation depending if you can trust what's on the label is actually in the label um like i said it may, may be good to address the root cause of a poor sleep uh your stress your blue light exposure eating late at night and even the sleep apnea especially the sleep apnea if you're on trt we need to get that under control so that you can uh, sleep better have better quality of sleep and the thing about melatonin to keep in mind is melatonin helps get you ready for sleep but doesn't always keep you asleep and a lot of people will still report waking up at half three in the morning even if they've gone to bed at half 10 or 11 or even later. So melatonin isn't always the fix that you think it is. But there are others who, who will mention taking high doses of melatonin, really high doses, and, um, and there may be some benefits for that. But anyway, the idea of melatonin itself causing heart failure, this is just absurd and meant to scare, to scare you. So it's almost like a late Halloween story. So anyway, the next time that you see a headline claiming that your sleep supplement might silently be harming your heart, remember, this wasn't peer-reviewed, it wasn't causal, and the best quality studies that we have, like the MEHR trial, actually show melatonin has heart protective effects. And this is a perfect example of why you should read beyond the headlines and watch our channel for more interesting information like this. But if you do want a more breakdown of real science versus media fear mongering, 
subscribe, drop me a like, and share this with someone before uh, they throw out all their melatonin gummies in a panic. And check us out on Instagram, TikTok, and uh, now on Spotify, you can listen to content like this.